I recently had a chance to go for a wee break in Tasmania and one of my customers had let me know that a, an antique shop in Devonport, the Antiques Emporium I think it's called, had a big selection of old cameras and uh, so I went along there when we were in Devonport made a special effort to go and see what was there and the first thing I spotted of notice was this Retina 3S camera. Of course I don't really need another Retina 3S, I've probably got four or five here at the moment. But um, it caught my attention because I thought well it's if it's cheap enough I can service it and sell it on, put it back out in the real world. So I had a quick look at it and the first thing I noticed was that the aperture scale only goes up to f2.8. Now that was a feature of the earlier examples of the Retina 3S camera because most, most of the production of course the aperture scale goes out to f1.9. So I thought well that's interesting I've got an early example already in my collection but my one's a little bit, um, bit rougher than this because mine had been dropped on its head and the end housing here is not exactly squared up completely. I've done a pretty good job but it's not 100%. So I thought, yes, I'll, I'll have this one, um, and it can join my collection once I've sorted it out. So of course I picked it up, and I went to see if it would go, and of course it wouldn't go. At least the film advance moved. Nothing. Shutter, just no click at all. Doesn't sound like the, the shutter's either not cocking, or it's um, just failing to release. One or the other. I'm not sure. It could, it could be the cocking rack's gone. Anything's a possibility. The film advance isn't rough. So it's quite likely that, well, at least I'm hopeful, that the shutter just needs to be serviced. So what other things were wrong with it? Well, the leatherette's a bit loose on the base there. That's not particularly um, uncommon for older cameras. The lens. The lens doesn't click into place. And when I look at it, it's not even rotating into position. So I thought, well, there's something odd going on there. It was nothing particularly to see here. So I had a look at that. And it's nothing I can really see that's odd. The aperture's moving pin here is just working as I'd pretty much as I'd expect. Follows the uh, aperture scale through. So I was at a bit of a loss as to what the story was with this. And there's not really any way that this can get out of time with this because it's part of the same lever. There's nothing wrong there. So I turned my attention to the lens. And the aperture scale here, the setting lever on the side that opens and closes the diaphragm, is, is it, there's something wrong with it. it. The aperture does not close down beyond that point. It only drops down to, what's that, about f8, 5.6, something like that. And the lever on the other side, which controls the depth of field pointers, is stuck halfway through its range. And it won't move left or right. It's completely jammed up. So, I tried another lens on the body. And that rotates and locks into position normally. So, at least I know my problem with the lens mount it's not that it's been mutilated in some special fashion, but that lens has serious issues. So the, this would, is probably the most serious issue with this camera, is the state of this lens. I notice the focus doesn't really want to move either, it's very, very stiff. That may indicate that there's actually some physical damage that the lens, lens and indeed probably the camera itself has been dropped on its nose at some stage and that the lens has become compressed or distorted in some fashion. 
but uh, the shutter doesn't want to go regardless. See if I can get that to. I can't even get that to cock at the moment. What are we? Oh, the counter's on number one, is it? No, it's not. Oh, the blade's twitched. That's a good sign. That means that the cocking rack must be con con connected to the shutter probably correctly and that the shutter did actually twitch at that point. There's still something seriously wrong with that film advance. It wants to jam all the time. But at least it's looking like there's some hope. So this is um, a project I'll get onto in my spare time because at the moment I'm fairly well snowed under with repairs. And I will start by dealing with my lens problem I think. And when the lens functions correctly um, and I've got more spare time I'll strip down this camera Find out what's going on with that film advance because it's a little bit odd in its behaviour. Maybe something loose in there. And certainly the shutter needs to be serviced. Right, this lens. See if I can get the lens apart. I'm using a friction tool to loosen this conical section in the middle here. And hopefully that'll unscrew and that'll allow me to take off the front ring here, the name ring. That's uh, not a filter mount on the outside, that's for bayonet bayoneting on the um, lens hood. The filter's actually screwed to the inside edge there. And there's our lens. So normally I start by dropping the lens capsule out of the mount. Three screws with their washers. I'll tip those screws out, put them to one side, lift out the lens capsule. Now I'll inspect the lens capsule. I want to see if there's a problem with the diaphragm on the lens itself, the capsule, and there's not. The focus is a little bit stiff, not particularly rough. The movement here is virtually, it's virtually seized up. Right, from the back of the lens we have four screws. These are longer screws than those ones that were on the front of the lens. If you're pulling one of these apart, take note of what goes where and line the parts up so that you can put them back in the correct position. Lift off the back of the mount here, the lens mount part, and this brass piece on the inside. That is the cam that couples to the rangefinder on the camera. And that's uh, no rougher than usual. It's stiff. And I'll take this apart. Start with this section. Then there's a shim. I'll pan out back a bit so you can see these. I lay these parts out in order so that I can put them back or so that I'm reminded where they go. Usually I remember anyway, but um, it doesn't hurt to help with a bit of memory aid there. So lift off this section, it comes away with its spring. We have the first of the pointers depth of field pointers and this little piece here, this little follower, ah, and here's our clue. 
This is bugging. This little cam is all bent out of shape. I'll zoom you in a bit. I'll zoom you in lots. That's probably not going to focus there. I'll zoom you back out of it. Yeah. The pin on this little cam is bent right over. Um, there's no danger that could have moved and followed this slot in the mount down here. So there's our problem. That's our number one problem with the lens is that it's bent. How you go about bending something like that, that's a bit tricky. Um, I've never seen one as mutilated as that. Normally they're just slightly bent if they're bent at all, which is a very uncommon. And they just need to be squared up so that the pin that follows the slot and the lens, the pin that the uh, depth of field pointer follows, and the little bush that this pin on this lever couples to are all working in the same plane. That basically they're all perpendicular to the lever itself. So with that out of the way, what have we got? We can lift off this little spring, the return spring for the other depth of field pointer. We can probably lift that out. There we have it. Now I'm down to this little spring, which I'll lift off if I can. If I can't, I'll leave it in place because I don't want to damage it. It's very fine, but sometimes it's if you leave it in place while you're servicing the lens, it's easy to, to damage it if it gets trapped underneath the edge while you're working on the other surface, for example. See if it'll pop off for me. Sometimes they, they are good, other times they're not. No, it's not going to come off. That's all right. It can stay. I'll just slip that back out of the way. Now there are four screws holding four wedges in place. Three of these I'm going to remove. And the fourth one is the post that this spring's on. Well, because I... For two reasons. One, because it's got the spring on it. I don't want to damage the spring. And two, because it's a... Uh, you have to have a, sp a specially shaped screwdriver for that. Obviously, it's got to have a slot in the middle of the blade of the screwdriver to clear the post. Um, it's awkward to get into that little corner. There's very small space to get in there. Right, with well, those out of the way, I should be able to separate these two components, and I can. Now this is quite dirty, it's very dirty in here, um, that's dried grease, bit of uh, dust, usual sort of culprits, nothing, um, there's nothing dramatically wrong there, uh, and certainly it wouldn't catch my attention that there was a serious issue with that. So those components need to be cleaned, and they can uh, go back together with a bit of the appropriate uh, lubrication, and they should be good. I'm having a look at my depth of field pointers here to see if they've been forced or otherwise damaged from the outside and they don't appear to be so. So that brings us back to this little cam follower here and I have no idea as to how that came to be so mutilated. That's um, pretty amazing. So, I'm going to attempt to straighten this up. Parts, of course, for things like this are non-existent. Um, I think you probably would have had a hard time finding parts for these when the cameras were new. It's uh, just, just as likely that uh, 
Kodak's answer was um, send the lens back to the factory at Stuttgart and they would fix it or replace it or do something else to it. So my first task is going to be seeing if I can rescue this tiny little component. I've straightened this little component up uh, fairly well I think. It will be remains to be seen whether it will function correctly. So I'm going to clean the components of the lens mount here and reassemble everything and see if it will function when this component's back in place. I know from experience that the mechanism is very sensitive to distortions in this piece and that if there's anything that's out of place this will not want to follow that crescent shaped track smoothly and the depth of field pointers will be reluctant to move correctly. So at the moment I live in hope. I'll clean up these two components here and get this reassembled and this is our focus mount. Now that was very stiff in action. We need to make sure that I've got that, or I need to make sure that I've got that back together, that it's moving smoothly. That's the, uh, that's the foundation for the lens mount really, is this focus componentry. When that moves smoothly, then I can clean the other components and put them back. I saw nothing particularly unusual about the state of these other components. The single thing that caught my attention was this. So I'll clean these components up and you can watch as I reassemble it. I'm just going to use naphtha, cotton buds and uh, paper towels, wooden toothpicks to get all the traces of old oil and adhesive and any dust and dirt off these components. I have the componentry cleaned. I'm going to start reassembling things. So first of all I'm starting with a little bit of molybdenum paste, just running it around this little the groove here where those little wedges fit. Now there was some graphite grease or I assume graphite grease in those in this spot to start off with. The molybdenum paste is very good. Uh, I'll run some on that face at the front there, just in case there's any friction on the mount. Make sure my spring is back out of the way where it won't get harmed. And bring these two pieces together. I've got to get the single wedge that we didn't loosen into place first. That was easy. And I'll replace the wedges, the wedge opposing that one first. I might need to pop one of these into place underneath this fence. Back out of the way because it saves me having to remove that fence. Yes, like that. Drop one of these wedges into position. Now on the vast majority of these lenses I've worked on, these little wedges are covered or coated with a low friction material. It's green. Um, it's probably not Teflon, but it's some substance with very low friction properties. And it certainly has a plastic-like appearance. I don't know what it is. I've just slid that into position and I'm just checking the movement of the mount to see that it moves smoothly. It's not unduly tight and it does feel slightly tight. So I'm just going to slacken that off, pull the lens across slightly, which effectively pushed that wedge back out of the way, and check the feel of that lens. That feels quite good. It should move smoothly. Um, but there should be no rattle. If you 
hold the two components and you feel movement at that point then you know that the wedges are too too far apart or one you know they're too loose effectively they're not holding it the componentry together well and you need to move one or more one or either of the wedges inwards so this wedge here is the one that was underneath that brass rail now that immediately tightened things up there so I'm just going to try that that's good that's moving smoothly now what I did there to move that wedge back was simply loosen the screw on it and pull the lens mount the inner part of the lens mount towards the outer part of the lens mount at that position which effectively pushed the wedge backwards slightly and meant that it was not pressing in quite so hard well there wasn't creating the same amount of friction so I'm checking this action still and it's good it's quite smooth it's certainly not loose um, it hasn't really changed much there I'm just going to now I shifted that screw opposite the spring post um, slacken the screw off, push the mount across and that mount is, is quite smooth now and I'm checking for rattle across these pair of wedges there's a little bit that way so I'm going to try loosening that screw, pushing that wedge in slightly, tightening that screw oh the movement certainly went away that's quite smooth still. I'll try it across the spring post and its mate. Now, there's no rattle there either, that's good. So far so good. The first of our depth of field pointers fits in here. I'm checking that that moves smoothly it appears to there's a bit of fluff there I just had to get rid of and I'll hook its return spring over the uh, hook on that ring and here we have the divider that separates the two depth of field pointers, now there's a notch in here and that notch couples with a little tab at this point by those gears to locate it the spring has gone underneath that divider so I need to pull the spring back out, that's better I'll check the action of that depth of field pointer, that's good, that smooth, works smoothly, it's snappily, it's good at this point we're ready to put back in that little component I think before I attempt to put that in there I'm just going to run a little bit of 600 grade wet and dry over that pin um, in case there's any roughness to it after I've been busily working on it with various tools in order to square it up Let's try this component, see if it will work for us. It doesn't want to drop down into that slot. It's like the pin is too large in diameter for the slot, or the, perhaps the slot's distorted. Well, there's certainly a notch on that slot. I'm just going to have to disassemble this and get that slot round and smooth I think well back where we were that slot was certainly quite rough I've cleaned that out um, used a bit sort of forced it back into shape I suppose you'd say running a uh, 
appropriate size the shank of an appropriate size drill bit backwards and forwards in there to uh, knock over some of the burrs and I've finished that up with a little bit of 600 grade wet and dry rub those edges carefully now I've just applied a little bit of molybdenum paste and hopefully that'll run smoothly get the second depth of field pointer in position get that timed correctly with the gear so that both pointers move at the same time I think that's correct can I go one more that's back that looks good and this component which couples to that little cam the pin drops into that slot there that little hole And the return spring couples to the spring post round here. I'd say my chances of success are probably about 50%. Uh, any distortion on that component tends to jam things up. It moves, but it's not moving as smoothly as I'd like. I'll temporarily assemble this even without screws. I just want to see if it'll fit together. I may or may not be able to get this together. I haven't got the cam in this piece at the moment either. So uh, this is just a trial fit to see if that lever will move smoothly it's difficult to get that shim to sit down correctly there I'll just gonna have to do this more the proper way I think and use my screws to align that I have three headless screws which I use to align this shim while I'm assembling things. I've only brought two with me because I've picked up one of the wrong things. Go and find the third one. These are useful to hold this shim in place. If it's not correctly in alignment, you can't get the case, the back of the case on correctly. This piece sits on top there. And this should go on with minimal struggle because we haven't got doesn't want to drop on. Yeah, that's better. Is it sitting down? It is. Oh, that's the depth of field pointers. Those appear to be moving correctly. Yeah, they're even squared up. Alright, that means that that little job was a success. I can carry on putting this together. Um, looks like it's going to be good. I'll pop that to one side for a second. Here we have the cam for the rangefinder. So I just run a little bit of molybdenum paste 
And the outside edge and the inside edge where it runs in this rear mount. And some on that face there where it couples with the pin on the rangefinder. Check that that runs smoothly in there. It does. This is held in place with three small retainers and three small screws. that's smooth that's good now I can pop this in place I've got to couple this tab here with these forks at that point so I've got to get everything in the correct position so that it'll drop into place which should be there That feels good. Yes, that's coupled. So I can put one of my four screws back in there because we've only got three of these positions currently filled. Put one screw in the opposite position. Check again. Now that's all working smoothly. So our other two headless screws that I put in there to help me line up the uh, componentry can come out. And our last two screws on the lens mount can go back in. And the focus is smooth, the depth of field pointers swing in correctly. This part of the job is done, that's looking good. So I'll turn my attention to looking at the lens itself. The diaphragm blades look clean, the glass looks quite good, the front of the glass is very dirty. This has been on display for some time um, exposed to the air so it's no surprise that the glass is dirty hopefully that it'll clean up that appears to have cleaned up quite well I uh, wouldn't say it was perfect but it looks much better than I'd hoped so I'll put a, some helical grease on this thread I'm just putting a few spots in half a dozen places around the outside you don't need to put a hell of a lot of grease on a helical like this and I'll work the grease in that feels good Nice and smooth. So I've taken the outer helical off. I've got to align the 
lens capsule with the mount and there are two things that we've got to align one is the guide post that keeps the lens capsule aligned in the mount so that it doesn't rotate it just moves backwards and forwards as the helical is turned and the second is where the diaphragm couples to the fork here and they couple so I've got to get both of those components coupled correctly and I know from experience if I start by getting the diaphragm coupled and rotate the lens capsule slightly it'll drop into position and all will be good that's the theory Well that's looking hopeful, that's all working smoothly. Put the outer helical back in place, rotate that into position and we have three screws and washers that hold the outer helical and therefore the lens capsule into the focus mount now obviously I haven't serviced the camera yet so the shutter doesn't work so I cannot mount the lens on the camera and then adjust the focus with the shutter open on the B setting because the shutter doesn't open so I will adjust the focus on here on a reflex body which will be accurate enough for my current purposes and then when I've got the body serviced I'll be able to uh, come back and make final adjustments. Well that's all focused correctly. I'm just checking the action of this. Focus appears smooth. Aperture opens correctly. That looks good. Now yeah, that tab, that tab's unusually short used to seeing them look longer than that let me compare that with a lighter lens yes there's obviously been a manufacturing change there this tab is very short comparing it with this one here on a lighter lens there's a difference of about uh, oh, quite a lot there in terms of serial numbers check that again on the camera this is on a uh, reflex S that I'm checking this And I'm checking that the aperture opens and closes correctly, and it does. Well, that's a new one on me. I didn't realise there'd been a change made there. It was obviously made fairly early in the sequence. So now I'll just clean up the front piece here, the lens hood mount and name ring, which is quite clean. It can go into place. It's got a tab on it and it only goes in one position. Just there. The conical section that screws in and holds it all together.
and the friction tool to turn that into position. And there at least, my lens is recovered and all good to go. And hopefully, the rest of the camera repair job won't be any worse to deal with.